Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Dealer Socket Power Break. So happy to have you with us today. I'm Julie Lozano, and um, again, just thank you for taking 30 to 40 minutes out of your day to um, have this discussion with us. Power Break is designed to be a 30 minute to 40 minute session, delivering straight talk and solid insights about topics that you may not know about or just wanna learn a little bit more about or just maybe haven't thought of. So a few logistics before we get started today. You will see a question tab over to the left of your screen. We are in listen only mode today, but please feel free to enter those questions at any time during the presentation. We'll get to many, as many of those as we can live while we are discussing our topic today. But for those that we can't get to for time constraints, we will be answering those via email at the conclusion of the webinar. The webinar is also being recorded, so feel free to come back to the landing page, dealersocket.com slash webinars at any time at the conclusion of the webinar so that you can revisit the content or share with your friends and colleagues who may be interested as well. I'm really excited that today we um, have a guest joining us. His name is Dave Malone. He is the channel director with Car Wars. Um, Dave is gonna talk to us today about how you can make the most out of every phone call that comes into your dealer shop, dealership and how the partnership between Car Wars and Dealer Socket really maximizes um, your ability to convert more of those customers to actual showroom visits. So Dave, again, thank you so much for um, joining us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and turn the controls over to you so that you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and a little bit more about what we're gonna be talking about today. Fantastic, thanks so much, Julie. I really appreciate you having me. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about you know Car Wars and Dealer Socket. I've been around both companies now for a little over six years. And uh, we admit we're, we're just a bunch of phone nerds, but most of us have also been in the automotive industry in some capacity, either selling cars on the finance side of it. So not only are we a bunch of phone nerds, but we've also been in the CRM world and we've been in the automotive world. So I think in, because of those reasons, respectively, a lot of dealerships kind of listen to where we're at and, and where we try to fill in some gaps and solve some of the problems that, that they go through because we, we've been there, we get it. So thank you for, very much for having us. Um, yeah, just let me give you a little bit of an overview of, of kind of what Car Wars is all about. Um, you know, we're the phone solution for a little over 13,000 automotive dealers. And, and that's a big deal right now. I mean, I think I heard a stat not too long ago from NADA, something to the range of there's a little bit more than 16,000 uh, dealerships, in, you know, franchise dealerships in the US. So that kind of just right off the bat helps, you know, you understand that we're probably managing two thirds of the market out there right now. Um, so it's really exciting for us. And it's definitely a partnership with Dealer Socket. I mean, Dealer Socket invested very early on, you know, ahead of the competition to make sure that their integrations with Car Wars was really ahead of the curve and better than everybody else's. So it's huge. You know, we work with owners and managers who are just basically frustrated that expensive leads and valuable customers don't always receive a positive experience when calling into their dealership. You know, one of the best compliments that I really felt that we received this year was from a dealer principal that just said that they really felt that Car Wars combined with Dealer Socket was their central nervous system for all their expensive leads. So for me to hear that, that really resonated. You know, and, and I kind of, you know, done my homework and, and Dealer Socket and Car Wars, we've all done our homework. We've kind of found out there's a lot of reasons why dealerships, you know, like the, the team that's listening to this call today and why they turn to us. So hopefully some, let me ramble off a few reasons and maybe they resonate with, with a few stores here and there. Um, simply, you know, a lot of dealerships know that their sales and service departments need help on the phone, but they really don't know where to start. You know, they're anxious knowing they should listen to all the phone calls, but let's face it, they're busy selling cars. They just don't always find the time. They lack CRM insight into what's actually happening on their phone calls. You know, they struggle with low CSI scores because of bad phone routing and you know, poor customer communication sometimes. Um, a big challenge out there is they're tired of costly sales training sessions that go to waste because of high staff turnover. You know, and obviously they wanna discover which marketing efforts generate phone leads for actual new business. It's, it's pretty, 
interesting out there, Julie, that, I mean, most dealers know the phone should be a value asset to the dealership, but sometimes they just feel overwhelmed when trying to manage it all. They're, you know, they're no different from anybody else, but being top notch on the phone shouldn't be complicated or time consuming. So that's where dealer socket and car wars comes in. We as a team, as a partnership, we do the work for the dealership. A lot of people ask, well, how do you, you know, how do you go about that? We leverage human reviewers. We have right around 100,000 people that listen to every single phone call that comes in and out of the dealership. And then we leverage our artificial intelligence, which we'll talk here pretty soon. That's called Carry. And then we will help track and record and categorize every inbound and outbound call at a dealership. So when the dealer told me that we, you know, we fit in as their central nervous system, that really, you know, pumped me up because now I know that everything that we have put in place has really created, you know, an ROI for these dealers. We're, we're creating revenue. Um, why, why that's so important? Here are some things that I think that we do really well that sets us apart from our competition. You know, we'll tell a dealership what happened on every single call. You know, with sales performance analysis, voice recognition and a simple written recap. We alert sales or service managers quickly if a call is mishandled and needs follow-up attention. We'll do that either a text or a voice, uh, you know, a text or an email or both at the same time. And we know that simple is best. Trying to teach salespeople sometimes, you know, um, a sales script over the phone can be really challenging. So we teach our crisp metrics that are super easy to understand and point every call toward the right outcome. We make you know, handling the phone calls easier with on-screen customer history, DMS data, and instant dealer socket CRM integration. That's the huge secret of our partnership, in my opinion. And then finally, our click-to-call and outbound performance data allows a dealership to easily pursue and hold, you know, and, and hold their team accountable because they know that following up on their best leads is the best way to go. Julie, so do you want to kind of get into um, a little bit of what our Chris metrics look like? Yeah, I would uh, love to um, have everybody learn a little bit more about CRISP and what it means. Um, I, I've heard it many times from you, and I think it's really, really valuable information, and uh, I think it's a great way for people to remember in an acronym mm -hmm. form, <laughs> um, okay. you, know, what, what, you know, the best ways to um, um, hold everybody accountable. Yeah, you bet. Sounds good. Well, let's see, you know, let's start with C. C stands for connect. But this is not to be confused with answered. Connect means that your sales customer called into your dealership and spoke to someone that could actually answer the question. Speaking to a receptionist and being transferred to a voicemail does not count as a connected call. There's a lot of expensive phone systems out there that can connect a, you know, a caller into a receptionist and then they can transfer that to a voicemail and that just doesn't always help. Matter of fact, a lot of our best practice dealers, they kind of even turned off um, anything that has to do with the voicemail because it's just falling into the black hole and customers are just really not being, um, you know, serviced correctly, which leads us to this. Next is RI. This stands for request and invite. This is super important because we're not trying to sell the car over the phone, right? We're still selling the appointment. We've all seen the customer's journey. You know, most dealers customers are gonna shop between 10 to 15 websites. Then they're gonna call into four to five dealerships. And per NADA, which we agree with, most customers are only gonna visit 1.2 stores. So when they call you, they're basically trying to eliminate you from their dealership's visit list. So you wanna make sure that you are among the 1.2 dealerships they actually visit. And the only way to do that is by requesting and inviting every sales opportunity into the dealership for a test drive. We all, you know, we know that when a dealership asks for an appointment, at least 90% of the time, they'll give you some form of a yes. So there's no reason why not to request it every single time. Which leads us to this. Next is S. This stands for set. We want to set a firm appointment, meaning Friday at 3 o'clock versus a soft appointment example, when they just say, you know, we're just gonna come in sometime on Friday. The reason why that's a big deal is this. If somebody just sets a soft appointment, only 25% or less of those customers actually show. 
compared to if a salesperson sets a firm appointment, and especially if it's been confirmed by a manager, we see more than 75% of those customers showing. So that's a huge, huge part of following the Chris metrics exactly. So all three of these first things, Julie, these are all the inbound um, metrics of our CRISP. And then the last is P. P stands for pursuit. This is where you reach out to stranded callers that didn't connect the first time around and where, you know, the dealer socket CRM follow kicks in where they're, you know, they're following up on customers, no show appointments, leads and, and basically doing their tasks. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it, it totally does. Uh, my recommendation would be to print this screen, take a screenshot of it right now, print it out and hang it up on your wall if you're a BDC director <laughs> and make sure that your your people are following this and, and thinking about it every day. Hey, Dave, I have a quick question for you. Um, I'm curious about how many dealerships that you come into as a new provider to them who aren't using a solution like yours. What, mm -hmm. what do the metrics look like currently? In other words, mm -hmm. when you first come into the store and they know they need help, what do their numbers look like on your first visit as you're, as you're pulling those numbers? You know, I'm glad you asked that. Um, we're right on the same page here, Julie. This is a dealership crisp report. It's definitely the bread and butter of what a dealership can look at every single day. You know, this is a, this is a live report. Um, right here in the right hand corner, if, if you just follow it, it says July 1st to July 16th. So this is only 15 day snapshot. This is a dealer that we put on Car Wars um, last year, and this is only their, probably their first 30 days of data that we've given them. So they're starting right out of the sheet. What makes this an interesting story is, I remember when we were interviewing the dealer and we happened to ask him, what do you think your current connect rate is? And he mentioned to me, oh, I think we're probably 85, 95%. Okay, great. I kept on you know, asking questions. I'm like, well, regarding requesting and inviting your customers into the store, what do you think your percentage is? And this is before we've even put it in their store. They had no idea. He came out to me and said, you know what? We train our salespeople and my gut feeling is they probably should be asking every time, but we're probably right around at least 90%. Hmm. So that was a very interesting conversation right off the bat because if you take a look at this, Julie, only 67% the C score connected, right? So they have more than 30% of their expensive leads not even connecting to somebody that could help them. And going back to what his comment was regarding requesting and inviting. Again, you know, you're hoping that your people are doing the right thing, especially you're spending a lot of time on training, but how do you know if you don't know, right? So we're the detective for you. So in this scenario, the request invite score was only 57%. And what makes things more challenging, you keep going from left to right, the S is the 25%. That's where they're setting firm appointments and only 25% of it was very firm. So at least this is a good benchmark where to start, right? This is nowhere close to where this dealer wanted to be. It's obviously his goal from here on out every single day, day in and day out to get better. The good news is now, you know, it, it's very, um, it's, it's very clean data. They can see where they're at. It's very transparent. So they can build on successes every single day. Yeah, those, are, those, are, yeah. those are great numbers, Dave. I, I had a, a very strong suspicion that the dealership's anticipation of what those numbers were going to be and what they actually were, were pretty different. <laughs> they really are. And I, I love to almost ask that question every single time before we install it, just to get their perception of where they think they're at. Um, sometimes people are on and sometimes they're, they're not, but either way, you know, the, this is the recipe for success as long as they follow it and going, going forward. Um, I want to show you something that's really important also here, here at the, at the middle part of this report, the call data, you know, here again, this is only a 15 day snapshot, Julie, there were 423 phone calls that came in on sales track lines, right? We, we always think that it's best to have a bridge in place where we separate the service calls from the parts calls and sales calls. So in this case, these are truly 423 sales calls that came in. What's interesting is 283 actually connected, right? This goes, falls right back in line with the 67% connect score. Where this is powerful is if you think about how many people called in, the 423, and how many actually connected, that means there were 140 phone calls that never did connect. 
Why that's important is this. If you think about what the dealership goes through month in and month out by budgeting, right? I don't care if they have a $10,000 a month or $100,000 a month marketing budget. If you divide that by how many phone calls come in off of that, divide that by the marketing budget, you're going to see how, how expensive leads are and why you have to capture them up front. If you do fail the first time around, which a lot of people do in this case, right, more than 30, 30%, if you have nothing in place like Car Wars, then you have no idea on where you're losing these customers and when. So we make it very transparent for these customers. So let's just go back to the ROI real quick. Out of those 140 phone calls that did not connect, most of our statistics will show that it costs a it cost, it cost dealership right around $300 per phone call to make the phone to ring. So going back to $300 per 140 phone calls, that's $42,000, Julie, that this is, and this is, again, is only the first half of the month. Those are opportunities of revenue that might not ever make it into a store. So that's why we want to create such transparency not just to show the dealership where they're blowing it, but give them a work plan and a task to go after these customers to make sure they get them back in the dealership in a very efficient, quick manner. So I'm gonna continue here real quick. Out of those 283 phone calls that came in, 132 of them were sales opportunities. And out of those sales opportunities, 75 requests were made. Kind of going off of line of what I mentioned is if you ask a customer to come into the dealership, they're going to give you some form of a yes, which is right, which is correct. Because if you take a look here, only out of out of those 75 requests, only eight of them turned them down, right? Where they are probably can um, gain some leverage in the store is 19 were set firm, fantastic, great, but they can do a better job with these 48 soft appointments or 25%, you know, we're only firm. So in a real life practice with dealers, where we've seen them gain a lot of momentum and creating revenue for themselves are, not only are these great statistics, but a manager can click on this number of 48 soft appointments. Let's just say there's only five days left, Julie, in a month, and the dealership is behind their goals and where they wanna go. They can set a plan in place where they can jump on these 48 soft appointments, have a manager call out, sure them up and confirm them and get them to firm, it's only gonna help them out because again, going back to those statistics, right? People who set firm appointments show 75% of the time. So if they can nail that within their processes, it's just gonna create a ton of revenue for them and a whole lot more sales uh, right off the bat. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say these 48 soft appointments are, are low hanging fruit. We've already gotten these people to call into the dealership. They're already interested enough to pick up the phone and call um, and, and speak to somebody about a vehicle that they were interested in so let's call those 48 people and, and get them to set a firm appointment in the last, you know, five, six, seven days of the month. That's awesome. Yep, it's, it's absolutely true. Well, and, and that's all the inbound. Um, you know, where, where I think we can help out dealers also um, is on the outbound side. We have a huge click-to-call functionality with Dealer Socket. Um, let me give you a little bit of, you know, take you back a little bit. I know you've worked in the in the automotive industry also, Julie, at a dealership. I remember even 25 years ago listening to a lot of my GMs or dealer principals given to all the sales guys saying, hey, John, you need to make 25 phone calls today. Well, I've seen it time in and time out where a salesperson will start calling right around 9 o'clock and come back at 10.15 to the boss and say, hey, boss, I'm all finished. And you almost look at the guy like, wait a minute, you called all 25 of your customers within an hour? And we're like, well, but did you get a hold of anybody, right? And a lot of the times it's no. And these stats will show you the same thing. Out of the 6,615 phone calls that they made on outbound, check this out, Julie, there's only 851 of them that actually connected. Again, how do we do that? Between car wars and dealer socket, we have all these people that listen to every single phone call that go in and out. So we know that they're not just making a phone call, right? And it's not just going to a voicemail, it's not just going to uh, Walmart as an example to hit your quota, right? Not that that ever happens, <laughs> right? So we make sure that there's transparency within the dealership 
And if somebody is given a quota, if it's a BDC team and they know they need to make 100 phone calls a day, fantastic. Not only will we show you how many phone calls were made, but we're going to show you how many phone calls were actually connected, which at the end of the day is the most important. I mean, would you agree with that, Julie? Do you think a lot of the dealers that we work with would agree with that, or am I off base on that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're, I think you're dead on. Um, kind of leads me to my next question, and I apologize if I'm jumping ahead, and if you're going to cover this later, you can just stop me. But um, accountability is a, a huge deal in, in every dealership. So what is to keep, um, obviously you're listening to all of these phone calls, so you, you know the result of these phone calls, but in a typical dealership, at least in my experience, they would say, yeah, boss, I made those 20 phone calls that I was supposed to make, or 25 phone calls I was supposed to make. Um, and then I just clicked complete in my daily tasks in the CRM, but what, what's actually holding them accountable? I guess I'm asking about, about reporting. What, what can a GM, GSM look at to show what are my salespeople actually doing? Ah, perfect. Yep, this is yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, this is an easy report to follow, right? I mean, it's gonna show every one of the salespeople, it's gonna show everybody in the BDC department, and it'll show Outbound and inbound calls all in one snapshot. Our GMs, our GSMs, they live on this report. Again, it's not just a report. It's a live breathing report. It's clickable. So if you want to take a look at, let's look at the very top guy, David Allen right here. He made 873 outbound calls, but all of those outbound calls, you know, he only connected right here, 116 of them. So if the, you know, management wants to click on all 116 phone calls and listen to them, they can but going from left to right, this is complete transparency. It holds everybody accountable. Real, you know, realistically, it could be a scoreboard, and you can go left to right. You know, how many appointments were set? In this case, were four. How many sales opportunities claimed? And it even shows how many firm and soft. So everything right here on one report makes it super simple. Is this kind of the report that you were looking for? Yeah, absolutely. This is perfect. Okay, fantastic. Do you want me to um, kind of go into some of the uh, the integrations? I, I got a question on the panel, and they want me to jump into integrations. Is that okay? That's absolutely perfect. I was going to ask. Um, yeah, we, we'd love to see the power of Car Wars combined with the Dealer Socket CRM, and and what customers can expect to see with that integration. Okay. Perfect. Let me show you what that looks like. So this page right here. Um, it's, it's the snapshot of what it looks like in dealer socket and car wars combined. So if I can get your eyes to look at the very left-hand corner, this is a alert as an example that came to, um, came to a GSM. And what it tells them is this, the phone call was connected. There was a sales opportunity, but there was only a soft appointment set. So if he wants to listen to what happened there, he can, he can come right down here where it's a blue triangle hit that, and it's gonna play in this situation, it was a five minute and 16 second call. So he can listen to that. And just a little bit of a teaser, um, our artificial intelligence, it's called Carry, and we can go over that a little bit, but to give you a little bit of a teaser, do you see the different colors of where it's red, green, orange, and so forth? This is listening to the customer, and it's giving data on, is this customer happy? Are they sad? Are they angry? So we'll get into that a little bit, uh, here pretty soon, but just continuing, it shows what phone call, you know, who called in. It shows it came in from a website, and now it gives a quick recap. So instead of the GSM, if he, sure he can listen to that whole five minute call, but let's face it, these guys are super busy. We're trying to take work off their plate or give them a concentrated vision on how to get to their work plans quicker. We give them a quick little recap, and it just shows them, you know. Rick answers the call and it shows everything about that call. So they could dive right into dealer socket right here in the right hand corner where it says open in dealer socket. It populates right there. The difference between dealer socket and car wars integrations is everything is combined compared to if they had to go to another CRM or if they went to another call tracking provider, everything is generally in two different platforms. So they're trying to maneuver from one point to the other. With us, it's combined. Let me dive into a little something here. This is the sales tracking report. You know, Dealer Socket has the only automatic call assignment integration 
with inbound phone ups. Most CRMs have to manually move over phone calls into their sales pe you know, person's sales bucket, where compared to dealer socket, it's already there. You know, the calls automatically go to the top of the employee's work plan, which is huge, right? We're all about efficiency. Dealer socket's all about efficiently, uh, you know, efficiency. Um, the salespeople, they love this because it prevents them from creating a duplicate in the system which is a big challenge in, with, a, with a lot of people. Most sales reps don't have access to the tracking report, so they would manually add a phone up you know, in socket. But for them here now, they can simply click, you know, click on it, on the to-do, and then recording of the phone call will be there. So they don't have to like jump all over the place to try to find this anymore. You know, Look how easy it is to make, you know, and track outbound calls in the other socket with click to call. This is a big functionality part. Simply click on the number you wish to call, right? And in the admin section, you can add a direct line to, to the phone by the user. The user simply tells the system where they want to take the call. And when they select the number, the phone rings and it automatically dials the customer. No, no need to, you know, put in a phone code. Um, this works from the desktop or mobile app. Again, talking about just separating dealer socket from its competition, you know, dealer socket is the only CRM where click the call works directly out of there, plus they have a mobile app. So if you put your, you know, you put yourself in the salesperson's shoes, yes, you can be in your office, you can be out, you know, out cruising the inventory and still make all these phone calls. So from here on out, there's generally, there's generally no excuse to make that, you know, you can't make them and they don't show up in the system. In Blackbird, the call is automatically tracked in, in the work notes and the customer, um, you know, for the customer and it counts as a CTI. So, you know, simply click on the link to listen to the phone call right here in the right hand corner and they can. Next, the calls automatically go to the top of the employee's tasks. They love this as a present them creating a duplicate in the system, even in Blackbird or Classic. So both with both situations, we're truly making it simple for them. And the one thing that I wanted to, to mention also, Julie, is you know. A lot of times people get caught up on merging existing leads also, where this, I, I know I've kind of said that, but I want to make sure that everybody really understands where a lot of people get hung up is just that on creating duplicate leads. So with dealer stock in, in Car Wars uh, integrations, it has really saved a lot of time. Let me show you one thing here too. Here is the daily checkout report. It's it's um, it's a native app. You know the daily checkout report and using click to call makes the daily checkout report process so much more you know valuable. Not only can you see how many calls your salespeople made, but how many actually connected, and that's the big part with us. You can listen to them right from you know your checkout report. This is a great way for the manager to coach up the team and make sure they're being crisp on the phone. This also works well, again, with, um, you know, the sales managers. They should be confirming appointments and calling no-show appointments. And here's one of my favorites. This right here is the ROI report. And I've even had a lot of the dealers that we work with, Julie, Julie mention to me that this is their holy grail. Reason being is, again, if we're trying to make the, you know, the life of a manager efficient, where they don't have to jump all over different places to find their information. Here within Dealer Socket, that's integrated with Car Wars, they could see every single lead that came in from their sources, right? They could see how many appointments were booked, how many appointments actually showed, and then they could even see how many were sold and the sold lead percentage. So if they want to plug in there, what it's costing for them upfront you know, with AutoTrader and Cars.com or whoever they're using, now we can give them, you know, what their top gross is, their F&I gross, their total gross. This is a game changer for a lot of the dealerships. And the um, dealer socket 
customer success manager can help build that for the dealer. It's going to set them, you know, a million years apart from any other competition. Would you, when you were back in the dealership world, do you see something like this being valuable to you? 100%. I mean, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's not just about your employees accountability, but it's the accountability of the vendors and the lead providers that you're using. And uh, I, I think so, so many people could take advantage of a report like this right off the bat. Yeah, I, I know that our our dealerships have um, expressed to us that not only are they more efficient now, because of that, they're getting to a lot more, right? And now in the past, let's face it, a lot of the lead providers used to beat their chest on how great they were. Well, we don't have a dog in the fight for either one of those, but what we are trying to do is, is show them where their best leads are coming from and how efficient you know, they are with them. That way they can decipher for themselves. Are they spending too much money with one provider compared to the next? So we really feel like, you know, again, coming back to being the detective for them, our whole goal is to make sure that their ROI is there with this tool. Yeah, that's great. Um, hey, Dave, I have a question coming in. Um, sure. Apparently this, this viewer saw a screen that you um, clicked through that showed um, uh, trackable numbers. And their question, I don't remember specifically what screen they're talking about, but you might. And their question okay. is in regard to toll-free versus uh, local numbers and what your opinion is on, on what's best there. And I'm assuming that that may vary um, from market to market, dealership type to dealership type. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Let me, let me answer it by this. Yeah, um, we are one of the very few vendors that can give them not only a, a, a toll-free number, but a local number. So yes, we could absolutely, um, I'm looking for that one page that they might be referring to, um, but yes, we could give them both a toll-free number or um, a, a local number, not a problem. It doesn't cost them any more, and there's a, a basically unlimited. You could do that all day long. That's do a great have, question, about to ask it. Yeah, do you have any opinion on, on which might be better like let's let's say we're talking about a you know major metropolitan area um, where there are you know two to three different area codes available in that city area. Should they be using a local number or should they be using a toll-free number? My my guess is that sometimes local numbers might be better because they feel like they're actually talking to a dealership in their city. Yes, I mean talking to the management of dealerships that I work with, they will tell you they feel that the local numbers are the most powerful and that the customers will tend to pick those up compared to if somebody's just calling out on an 800 line, the customer is 50-50 on who this might even be, so they don't always answer it. So yeah, I, I would agree. I would think that they're more powerful. There are a few tricks that go around. There are some some dealers who um, like to have, you know, they, they maybe there's not, they're in a rural area, and maybe there's not even another dealership 60 miles away. Uh, you know, sometimes that they do put a, a, you know an 800 number on that one, but for the most important part of the bulk of their business, yeah, a local number is huge, and we can provide that where I don't think too many other vendors can at this point. Is there a limit to how many tracking numbers you can provide? There's not. They can have. It's unlimited. They can put as many as they would like. I mean, we see people put them on. There sometimes there are two and three different numbers on their newspaper ads, right? Just to see what part of the newspaper that customers are identifying with. We've seen them put it on their billboards. It, 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 you know, let your imagination run wild with how many things that you really want to see what's paying the bills. So you can have as many as you would like. Great. Um, one more question coming in, and then I, I think we're getting close to the end of our time together. Um, but the question is in regard to who in the dealership from a, a role perspective do you see most active inside of the reporting and accountability tools that Car Wars provides? Um, in other words, is, do you see a lot of, of GMs very active in the system, GSMs, BDC directors? What, who do you most interact with um, when, when discussing what they can, what tools and functionality can be used um, within the Car Wars dealer socket tools? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Legitimate for sure. You know, um, and, and by the way, we do this with the service side of things also. So um, who do I see very active? I see, of course, on the sales side, 
I see GMs, GSMs, they live and breathe by this. The ones, again, that believe that know that this is their, their central nervous system for their leads and for how their salespeople are performing, definitely the salespeople are involved, of course, but the GSM can now have at their fingertips everything that's going on within their dealership and they can control it better. So probably the GSMs are definitely on top of this, but trust me, I see dealer principals very much looking through this. They want to know what's going on in their dealership. Where are they making money? Where are they losing money? You know, where is dealer sock and car wars being the detective for them? They are definitely using it too. So across the board, they all are, you know, of course the GSMs use it a ton. Hey Julie, I, I got a question on my end. Um, somebody was interested in what I just showed them regarding the sentiment detection for um, for Carrie. Oh yeah, that, that looked interesting. I was gonna ask you about that as well. Yep, let me give you a little bit uh, of an idea here with um, Carrie. Let me get down to that screen, my apologies. Um, our sentiment detection looks like this. Um, when a phone call first came in with, with Carrie, what was interesting was the low hanging fruit was, you know, when a customer was angry. That one would have been interesting to see, but I was just happened to be at a Ford dealership most recently, and what they found interest, interesting regarding our sentiment detection with our artificial intelligence, a customer called in. They called in because there was a C, there was a OEM incentive, and but the problem was when that phone call was transferred to the salesperson, that they had a hard time, you know, explaining it. Well. What happened there was the customer wasn't angry, so it didn't show up, you know, where they were where they were mad or anything like that. But they showed up as surprised, and what surprised customers do is surprised customers are confused, and confused customers don't buy. So what happened was the phone call hung up, and that alert went to the sales manager, and they happened to listen to the phone call, and they're like, "Oh man, if." You know, John would have said this in this manner and explain the benefits of this program, the customer and happy. Sure enough, he called the dealer. I mean, excuse me, he, he called the customer and explained him the program more efficiently and effectively. And the guy came back in and bought the car today. So for me, the low hanging fruit was I thought it was going to be angry. But you know what? All the other things are very important, such as surprised um, also. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. So I do not see any other questions coming in on my end. Um, so I think we're about ready to close down. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add, Dave? No, I appreciate the time. I, I would say this. I mean, I know um, there's a lot to Car Wars integrations with Dealer Socket. You know, we just covered the fingernail of it all, right? There's so much to go over. I would recommend that they, um, they can email me. They could call me. My email is Dave at carwars.com. Would happy to help them out. Understanding we can go in depth uh, of a much larger, broader, um, you know, discussion. And you know, if I could um, be part of helping them see where they could be, you know, more efficient and productive on their end, I'd be happy to do so. Yeah, definitely. Um, Dave, I can't, I can't thank you enough for joining me today and talking a little bit more about Car Wars. And again, I've got Dave's email address up on the screen right now, Dave at carwars.com. Feel free to reach out to him. He has a ton of information. He was only able to scratch the surface today in our short time together. Um, but if you would like a more detailed um, explanation, description, demonstration of the Car Wars product and how it integrates well with your dealer socket CRM, feel free to reach out to him anytime. Definitely reach out to your customer success manager through dealer socket. They can also help you out with that information. Um, and I'd like to put up my information on this final screen as well. If you have recommendations for a topic for a future power break session, how they can be better, um, topics that you'd like to see covered, please reach out to me at any time. That's jlozano at dealersocket.com. And the URL for our landing page is also up on your screen, dealersocket.com slash webinars. And you can click on that link to get to the upcoming schedule of webinars that we have scheduled through June and, and beyond. 
And you can also click the link on that landing page to take you to the archive page where you can find all of our past webinars. Share them with your colleagues, friends, coworkers who may be able to benefit from the information. We hope that you are able to learn something that you didn't know before, and we look forward to seeing you on a future Power Break session. And again, if you asked a question during the webinar today, uh, look for an email in your inbox shortly. Thanks again so much, everybody, and we'll be talking to you soon.